So when I cut up the clip, I want to say a friend of the show. I think that's like kind of classic. Yeah, definitely. But Kev just wants to come come up because he's on a promo run. <laughs> <laughs> so you no, know it's crazy. I was like, yo, bro, let's let's have this little punchline, and we'll, for every episode, we'll we'll run that. And we'll say, hey, this is my golden hour, and that was my golden hour. You like that heck? And he's like, yeah. And we've done it for every episode since. There you go. Act like everyone's your best friend, bro. Hey, this is Sir South, and this is my golden hour. <laughs> oh, I love you, dude. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, the four dear nations lived together in harmony. Harmony. Then... Everything changed when the fire deer attacked. Only Derek, master of all four elements, could stop those boys. But when Boston needed him most, he vanished into the enchanted golden deer forest. Season four. Clap signifies the start of an episode. Are you all situated? Because I feel like fucking... Yeah, I'm good. Okay, remember, just keep that distance. So listen, one thing I am going to note before we start is I am paranoid. We don't have anyone watching the camera today. I am paranoid that since there's no one here, that the camera will click. It never clicks. It never does. But there's going to be moments where I might have to interrupt our conversation and say, yo, let me go check on the camera real quick. All right. Is that cool, Big Hollywood? <laughs> yeah. So, for those watching and listening, from the earliest GDP days, from the Boach Bonnie days, from the first Boach Bonnie ever, there was a figure, a mere shadow. <laughs> a fly-by-night shadow who was there since the start. I'd say the GDP has definitely not been a linear path. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going with this thing, man? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Six, uh, six months, eight months. But the first ever episode we ran was with Kev because Kev is one of my closest friends growing up. So when I cut up the clip, I want to say a friend of the show. I think that's like kind of classic. Yeah, definitely. But Kev just wants to come, come up because he's on a promo run. <laughs> <laughs> like is it is it really a coincidence that you now work for a radio station and there's a tape coming dead ass dead hey, ass may dropping in may a glamorous death new project <laughs> so kev last night yeah honestly like you better show up for this episode because kev's now a radio personality i guess <laughs> do you saw my snapchat story i did i did <laughs> he's like yeah it's gonna rain all day man <laughs> I was like, all day, like all day. How'd you find it? I was... You, you drove like a certain place? Yeah, the service was terrible. Yeah, it's not in Boston. Then Belmont, it picked up though, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's weird places. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm good. So fucking paranoid. I, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna put this down. Yeah, no, bro. It, but it, the music was good though. Yeah. Like, like, they were playing good songs. Yeah, they play everything from oldies to, like, hip-hop, R&B, like, a lot. What is it, The Heat? Mm, 98.1. I think it's The Wave or something. I, I think it is The Heat, but we're called, like, The Bomb Squad from 7 to 10. <laughs> so, Kev shows up for a job and literally just out of nowhere, like, did they know you were affiliated with the show at all? No. They had no idea. You know, I called last night, right? I called. I said, I just want to say, hey, shout out to my shout out to my friend, Kevin. Uh, I hope you guys aren't being too hard on him. He's like, Kevin? Who's Kevin? I swear to God. Where was I? I so Bro, look. I'll show you. Wait, what? He was like, Kevin? Who's Kevin? He's like, mm, okay, I don't know what Kevin is. <laughs> <laughs> bro. They, they know me as Sir South. <laughs> they, this is really on a promo run. <laughs> look. See the boss, the 617 number? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Kevin? He's like, all right. <laughs> I feel like it's probably the first time a white dude's called that station in a mad long time. Honestly. So who, first off, obviously we know why it was a good idea to get affiliated. You you like journalism to start with, though. Yes. So. 
<laughs> big facts. Yeah. I mean, you like communication and shit. You've always liked it. Yeah. But can you just explain how that happened? Like, did you show up to the stage and say, hey, I want to start working here? They're like, all right, come on the mic, young man. <laughs> Honestly, like, my pops, um, he, he knows, like, he knows about the rapping, the writing for journalism, writing for newspaper. He knows all of it. So, like, he hit me and was like, hey, I have a friend in radio. He'll call you, like, at this day. He called me. He was like, hey, you know, I'm Mark Harris. I run, I do this radio station from 7 to 10. He was like, I'd like to for you to intern. I said, yeah, definitely. So I showed up. It's actually around the block. It's in High Park. And, like, I thought I'd be doing, like, intern stuff, but they just had me on the mic. So you're repping Hyde Park proudly now? Mattapan. <laughs> <laughs> it was mad funny. So that So the first episode we ever ran was still at an undisclosed location. Yes. Hector was present the good old days. R.I.P. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, bro. Hey, we love you, Heck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heck, he's fucking around, bro. <laughs> um, but what was that? Late September? It had to be. Do you want to, well, actually, do you want to just start off by giving kind of a recap of who you are and, like, for any of the new listeners and new people to tune in? Yes. I'm Sir South. I am a artist, musician, rapper, uh, battle rapper. Uh, you can Very good me. battle rapper. Very good. You catch me on We Go Hard. I usually do battles in New York. I have one coming up in Providence um, on the 6th. And I'm also an aspiring writer. You know, a journalist. I write for Dorchester New- Rep- Dorchester Reporter, and you know, I'm just trying to make it out here. Hustler, hustler, yes. Also, Kev is probably one of the most interesting characters I've ever met in my life. Thank you, and an actor, and an actor. <laughs> oh yeah, let me Everything. go. Let me go over all my titles yeah. too. <laughs> show host, show producer, internet personality, actor, writer, director, editor. Uh, I'll say radio personality. You uh-huh. did in high school, right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, wait, don't forget about town soccer player. Town <laughs> soccer player. <laughs> Fucking um promoter, show manager. Uh what else do we do? Oh, producer. Can't forget about Can't produ- uh, director, the beats. producer, actor. Do you do score, right? You scored a film before. Oh yeah. Yeah, all the <laughs> producer. So Kevin Music producer. So Kevin, I have a, a running shtick. He he frequently asks me, he goes like, dude, like like so like do you even like doing that other stuff anymore (laughs) the answer is yes i do yeah but do you understand why i want to build the show honestly do you get it i get it but it's not linear i would say when we started out your thing was acting for sure so i haven't seen you act i mean no i've seen you act i act every day (laughs) i I see you (laughs) act but you know what i mean so i was just thinking like pull together projects in a while yeah I still want to make something mega, and I I still on the show. I haven't talked about it that much because like I'm not one to talk about something before, before it happens. It's done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I you feel, feel the same way. Yeah, definitely. Of course, that's like I'm more of like a talk to me when it's finished. You know. Mm-hmm. But I I noticed because you know you do the acting thing. That's when you started, when you wanted to start the acting thing, and then you started like directing, writing because you had no choice. You still have no choice, though. Yeah, you, know? you do the editing, the video, so I'm just like... I remember when we started, you was like, I want to act, but you ended up doing so many things because you have to, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, that was something we talked about in the first episode, too. Remember, that was like the first clip we ever cut was about having a job and doing mm-hmm. this shit. Yeah. Like, people don't get that, like, you have to fucking bleed through your eyes to make this shit happen. Mm-hmm. You still feel that way? Like, people think, like, you can kind of be glamorous about this. There's nothing glamorous about doing this shit in Boston and doing it the right way. That's the important thing. In Boston. Because if you go to New York or California, you just do a bunch of auditions, get a manager. I'm sure you can start little, but, like, if you really want to have something stagnant where you don't have to depend on people, yeah, you got to build your own. There's, like... Can you hear me okay in the yeah. headphones? Yeah. There, there's something I've noticed f- since we started the show. I think, I think my presence in the city is probably at its highest right now because just because I know most people, but like, I've been saying consistently that these kids, and you, I don't know if you feel the same way. And I know you study a lot of people, but like, people just don't have a model 
to look after. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like Cousin Stiz is really like the only in the city that people can actually look up to and say, okay, maybe if I trace through his path, then I can be successful in this. Yeah. I think that's part of the issue, don't you? Oh. For uh, music specifically. uh, This is a huge issue. Especially a lot of, like, when I hear a lot of music, like, a lot of dudes are talented. But it's just like, they make music that, all right, what do people want to listen to? Which makes sense, but it's like, do you want to hear it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, we're in the studio a lot. I hear so many people, like, when I'm waiting for a session, like, a lot of their music sounds similar. You know, it doesn't sound too different, you know? I th- yeah, and I think that's why I still, and I, I don't even mean to be biased, but I think that's still a reason why, like, I like to, why I still actively promote your music. And mm-hmm. you, even though, besides, I do it for my friends regardless, but, like, you, I'm going to give you a shameless plug here, and we'll cut this up as a clip, but Kev has clearly, on the tape coming, has clearly actively tried his best to tell his perspective of some shit that's been going on in his life for the last four years. And it's not like he's just hacking away at it. He's actively tried to say what's going on in his life. And I think people, if they can get access to it, are really going to feel it. Yeah. Thanks, Boach Pony. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. It was, um, it's funny you say that about Cousin Stiz. Because my friend, I was at a party with my friend, um, Jerry. He's Cousin Stiz's cousin. And he said before, you know, he popped off. He lived with him. He lived above him, and he was like, he was like, yo, I would hear his music. He had he made a hundred songs before he made Suffolk County, you know. I would hear him. He would play him all the time above me. Like I would hear he would just record, record, record. He had like at least two hundred songs before he even made the mixtape. So that 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 told him like that inspired me because it was like, it's not what people think. Some people think he just dropped shout out, you know, and it just happened. Mm-hmm. But no, he worked. You know, people he, need it. People need access to that story, though. Yeah, people don't do that. People don't. People just think like, oh, they dropped a, a song, they know so many people that they just shared it. No, he worked on that. You know, he shared it to mad DJs, producers, radio personalities, everybody until it got to Drake. You know, mm-hmm. and and I feel I feel the same way. Like, don't you think you you're learning the most just through repetition by just consistency? Mm-hmm. You get better the more you you do something. It's craft. It's all about craft. I also feel like we're, I feel blessed. It's like I've done s- put so much shit out on the internet. Shit, just bullshit <laughs> on the internet for so long. It's like, yo, the come up is, is being well documented. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can at least see. I will never delete a Coach Connie. There was one I was thinking about. That was pretty <laughs> Which bad. Which one? There was one. There was two. Which one? The parties one. I love those. <laughs> no, no. The weird shit I've seen at parties. There was one time where I, I was <laughs> oh, rolling the, around with the, the sex yeah. doll. <laughs> That's in the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I, at the time, I was just like, yo, I like doused myself in water, bro. I was just like, yo, what am I doing? You know, but you kind of got to take L's like that, I think. Oh, it's trial and error, for sure. Because <laughs> there, there was a time, bro, don't you remember? I was like, yo, bro, like, I'm, I'm out here really just making videos so they'll go big on the internet. Yeah. You lose a little bit of that, don't you think? For sure. It's like, same thing with music. A lot of people make music to make a hit, you know? It, it's weird, though. It's like, make something for yourself, but at the same time, you got to give it to other people. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's what, that's what makes it so hard. It's like, you got to make something that you like, but you got to make sure people like it, you gotta, if that yeah, makes it, sense. I mean, you got, if you want to be successful, like you got to learn how to sell it, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's inevitable that, like, we're going to play music or we're going to act like the people that we watch the most, you know? It's inevitable to be influenced. You, you imitate by a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen, but, like, you still got to be conscious of, like, is this me, you know? I know. I Do you feel like you fully know who you are? I know that's, like, totally profound, but at 23? No, definitely Ke- not. Kev's 12 days older than me. Yeah, I definitely do not know who I am. You see me doing so many, trying to do so many things. Like, no, I do not know. <laughs> trying to figure it out. Do you have something in your mind? You're like, yo, one day it's just going to like click and it's just going to like work. You ever feel that way? I do. I do too. I feel the same way. But I hope it's sooner than later. Sooner <laughs> <laughs> than 45, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you and I are our dads, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. There's a, I know, I feel like we're kind of at an age now where it's like, we talked about this a little bit. It's like, all right. 
time to go start making stuff happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. feel that way? Yeah. Uh, as soon as graduation hit, even bef- a little bit before graduation, my senior year of college, I what, felt that way. I went to UMass Dartmouth. I did. Well, initially, you I went to UMaine my freshman year. Then I transferred to UMass Dartmouth and graduated last year. But yeah, as soon as like, it's, it feels like a, a clock is ticking to make it, you know? Yeah. Also, like, it's different for you. I've always, you know, I've always wanted to be young and successful, bro. Like, I've just always cared about that. That's why, like, I never went out of PC, bro. I always was just fucking working, doing shit, like, killing myself to do it. But it's different in you trying to do it for music because there's an imminent clock in music right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel that pressure a lot? Yeah, I definitely do. But, you know, you just got to tell yourself, like, there's so many people that made it, like, older. And even if you don't make it, you just, you know, it depends what you turn to success, you know? Why? How would you define it? Uh, I would say making a project that, like, will live on forever, that, like, people will love, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean making millions or, like, touring. I definitely want to go on a tour. That's definitely a goal at one point in my life. I'm 100% doing a GDP tour. Stamp it. Definitely. And That'd be wild. Yeah. But, like, I... I I don't know, making a classic to me, that's just the, the goal for me. I, th- Yeah, and I, t- and if it's not this project, it, just keep trying. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. that's why I worked so hard on this one for a long time. Yeah, how long has it been? It's probably coming up on two years, honestly. But you were not hustling consistently for the whole time, though. No, 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 no. It's been There's been on little, and little pockets. Yeah, because it's all about, like, you know, you get the beats and, like, you kind of run out of ideas. And one thing, I don't want to just, like, have a song on there where it's just, like, I'm just rapping just to rap. Like, I want substance in it. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't think there's substance in it, you can listen deeply into it and be like, oh, he's he's actually rapping about something. Even, like, the party records, you know? Well, that's why I think this is also important, too, because, like, people who know you, and, again, we're going to do this as, I'm saying this as friends, mm-hmm. but, like, people who know you know that, like, you, like... You you get into different moods a lot. That's what that that's honestly what took so long to make the project. Cause the beginning you've heard you've heard the song. It's, yeah. It went a whole different direction. Mm-hmm. It was very misogynist and very angry and anger. But do you think you're a misogynist? I don't think so. But the music definitely <laughs> the music definitely came off like that. <laughs> Fuck For these sh- bitches and hoes. Fuck it, all it, that. It really that was like the first draft of the project. And then I was just like, my mood changes, so it's like, it changes to this, and then I I went through so much different mental states that, like, I cut songs, I added songs, and it's just like, all right, now, that's why it's it's just called The Marvelous Death, because I took everything, and it's like... Isn't it Glamorous Death? The Glamorous Death. (laughs) I'm bugging. But... I like a Marvelous, though. That's kind of fire, too. Yeah. I've been switching. It 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 has nothing to do with my beautiful Tartarus of Fantasy, though. It definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely heavily influenced by that album. Definitely. It loves it. It's, dope. it's, it's a, my favorite album ever. It's an amazing project, bro. Yeah. But that's why it's called, you know, my glamorous, a glamorous death or a marvelous death, whatever. But mm-hmm. it's because, you know, it's party records, but it's like the substance is so, you know, mean, dark, and, you know, in different modes that, like, even the party records have so much substance to it. Do you, do you think that. Also, again, when I say moods, too, it's just like you're like a moody dude, bro. It's always been that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're in the best mood of all time. And I'm the same way, bro. I'm up and down a lot, too. Sometimes you're in the best mood of all time. And sometimes you're just like tough to tap into. Yes. That's you, though. It's not. And I I think you you at least tried to like rationalize it on the tape. Would you agree? Yeah. I definitely speak on it. In the first half, like you'll be like. You'll fuck, you'll, you'll fuck with it. And then that last half, you'll be like, you'll understand it. Like, I explain it. Do you, did it help you, you think? Like, not even on some, when, when artists say like, oh my God, like, this is my therapy. But do you actually think like talking about it kind of to yourself with a mic helped you kind of rationalize some of the shit that's been going on? Uh, somewhat, you know, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's honestly hard for it to come out. That's why all of it I recorded in my room by myself. Cause I don't, I don't want to be in in a studio where like other people are there, and I'm and they're judging my, yeah, am I letting, I'm letting my whole like ideas, my whole feelings out, you know, in front of so many people, live, mm-hmm. you know. But surprisingly, like once I play the music for them, they 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 rock with it, they fuck with it. I think that's interesting for sure. Like so, sometimes I think of like Drake when he's like like very introspective in the studio. It's like yo, 
that's not like very human like to like be that open and there's other people around you, you no know? he said he said i remember i was watching an interview he said he does it by himself he likes to record by himself well, like him and just 40 yeah because he doesn't want you know he does he wants to spill out everything he, he has on his mind without people being in the studio with mm-hmm. him yeah i saw that, that i think that was the the views interview with zane Lowe. Mm-hmm. i was watching it last week actually i watch i still watch his interviews all the time bro yeah it's dope and it's so interesting watching other artists like have 30 people you know in the studio with them i mean it it it's, depends on who you are well some well i think that it would help if you try to make some hype shit yeah and you got to make like a party and, record and you're feeding off all the energy but like how the fuck are you productive bro yeah you're not definitely not so, some people like having a huge team around them though it makes them feel more comfortable you know yeah i get it but i don't, I don't know i don't think you and i are really built like that no nah, definitely like if i'm trying to say something meaningful no, I gotta no, be by myself. You no, know it's mad interesting though with Palooza, like the Coliseum in the Middle East. Like, you and I, like, n- this is why we get along so well. Is like, also, am I doing a good job, like, kind of like relating to you and also speaking to the people? I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're like, yeah, sure, bro. <laughs> but there's a, uh, you and I are like very indiv- individual, but like, some of the dopest moments have been the massive parties, bro. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That is crazy to think, yeah. Like when we're surrounded by the most amount of people and the most attention. That's the best moments. <laughs> <laughs> most fire moments for sure. For sure. And it's just like, damn, moments like that is just like, yeah, I want this. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's such a high, bro. Imagine feeling that like every night on a tour. Like, crazy. I know. But it's at the same time, it's like weird. I was like... Yo, I really worked my f- blit through my eyes to get both these shits done. And you were there for the Palooza too, bro. Like, yeah. when we were giving out wristbands to everyone. You were taking mm-hmm. pictures with every shorty. Yeah. Like, oh, let me get your number. <laughs> <laughs> like, you still hit up some of the chicks. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, 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 Get out of here. <laughs> nah. But there's a. Uh... Do you feel like it's weird to think that? Like, holy shit. Like, I like like the power of like being above all these fucking people. And like, you guys are looking at me. It's like an ego thing, you know? But mm-hmm. it's like the dopest high, bro. It really is. It, it it really is, honestly. Especially, like, just the whole night. Well, I wouldn't say before. Wh- which, it, which one specifically are you talking about? I'm actually thinking of the, um, the one we just, not just did. The Middle East. Middle East. That one was, like, during and after it felt amazing. Because, you know, like, even though I didn't sell the most tickets, like, I really did, like, try to get it to people so like it was tough for you though i know it was and then like by the time it ended all the people that actually bought tickets for me like it felt rewarding you know what i mean (laughs) yeah because they all stayed and like i didn't even see them before the show so like to see them when i come off the stage and they're like yo you did such a great job i'm like wow you really came like you know what i mean there was something so genuine about that show bro yeah it was like yo they everything they it was just really hard work. And then mm-hmm. it's like, holy shit, we fucking rounded up as many people as we know. I think that's what makes it the best because it's like, it's an intimate crowd. Like, everyone knows each other. It was, people. but it was also 600 people, bro. Yeah, true. But it's like 600 people of like, we all know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was, yeah, it's, it's like, just like, like, shout what? out Eric Fox. Eric Fox was there, bro. <laughs> yeah, people I haven't seen in years. I hit up <laughs> everyone in Lincoln Middle School, bro. <laughs> I did. I know you did. I was like, oh. We, we got a decent amount of our in middle school there. I, yeah. I'm running an episode here, bro. John's here, bro. He can't hear you. Oh, my God. It's fucking. <laughs> Shit, it's so annoying. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> no, we're still running. Oh, we're still running? Fucking kid can't hear you. Sorry, kids. Just had to open up the studio door. Um, yeah, bro, that was like so fire. Honestly, it was like it was just like we pulled in. Did I ask? I don't think we could have gotten any other spectators there that we know. Of, like, no, definitely not. It was dope, right? Thank you, everyone, for coming. That was so awesome. For sure. Thank you. 
Hope we get another one. I the hype when they were, when we were two days out. Like I was marketing it for so long. That's when I started to see like the snowball. Like holy shit, this this thing is gonna be fucking big. Yeah, it and, was. And then how about like it was like ten thirty and there was no one there. And then there was that rush of like four hundred people at the door. Crazy. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Wild. But it's also like you get a taste of like what it can be. Like all the other st- like Adam, like he's like yo, they say I can't come back in. It's just so many people hitting up your phone. Like, yo, we're trying to get backstage. Yo, <laughs> we're trying to do this. It's just like. I, I know. It was like ridiculous. Yeah, it was but, crazy. But, yo, shout out to Veal. So, Veal was having issues at the door, <laughs> as we know. <laughs> shout out to Veal. Definitely. Bro, so he, so I get a call from him. Whatever. I'm not going to go too far into that. But it was, I had to leave, right? And then I round the corner. And I was like, the whole night I was like, yo, I do not want to be outside when this is going on because I'm not going to be able to get back in because yeah. I've been so crazy on my phone. This, this fuck, my story has turned into a TV show. Everyone's going to be so excited about it. I got to make sure I stay there and I can like still manage the show. And so I go out. Veal was having issues with the bouncers and he was uh, obviously upset. And then people just started to mob me. And I was like, holy shit, how am I going to get back in? M- mind you, this is when, like, K-Merc set is going on. So the show is like, started. And then I come back around the back door, and it's locked. So I had to, like, go all the way up around, down the stairs, and then all the way through. And he even ended up coming back. <laughs> they, they, they don't fuck around over there, bro. No, it was... It, shout out to them, though, but, yeah. They did not let people back in. <laughs> what do you think was a, a better surprise? Like... Definitely the first one, Coliseum. So crazy, For sure. man. Yeah, it was just like, whoa, you know? Whoa. <laughs> it was like a high I'd never felt before, bro. Yeah. I was just like, yo, what the fuck? That was also people got there late, too. Same shit. Yeah, and it was like people stayed until it was over. And then we turned it turned it into a concert. It was yeah. hilarious. But you don't see that often. You don't see people stay until it's over. Like, everyone stays until it's over. Yeah, it was fire. Except for your set at Middle East. What are you oh, talking yeah. about? Wow. This is the last song. <laughs> I said, I need everybody to come to this. It's the last song. And so everyone like comes up, and then like South sets over, and then like Polo set. <laughs> set. Shout out to Polo, man. <laughs> there was a. I think it was like. I don't know if you cut any of these comments after the Middle East, but it was like. People were so surprised that a show like that happened. They were like, what the fuck? I honestly didn't. Yeah, I caught a lot of that. They're like, yo, how like how did you do this? Or like, this is not the crowd I'd normally expect at a Malay show. Or No, it was a, not a strange crowd, but it was like definitely not well, we had Uncle the crowd you expect at a hip-hop show. We had Uncle Tambourine up top. Yeah, shout out to Uncle Rob, man. <laughs> That's my guy, like, We need you on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass, let's get him in the bus. <laughs> Hey, yo, you're going to murder me, but I used to. Tune in. Hey, Stoop Kid, thanks for watching, bro. You a tough dude to reach, man. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet out the link real quick, too. Um, so, sorry, what were we talking about? Uh, we was talking about the show. Great moment for everyone involved. Yeah. Definitely. Well, not everyone. Not everyone. Some people couldn't get in. It's fire. <laughs> Still fire. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say live with my guys. So. Yeah, the only problem with going live on this YouTube is the mic that picks up is the the photo booth mic. So it's not it's not like it's not picking up this audio, it's just picking up like the room audio. So, I'm going to need I'm going to need that check to come in to get it like real professional like when you see like really nice streams. Mhm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were talking about Coliseum. So, I think what was so dope about Coliseum, bro, was like, they are not used to having concerts there. There were those slippery-ass boxes, bro. And shout out to Shannon Cronin. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Shannon Cronin. He slipped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just, like, played it off. Show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> Dead's ass, bro. She was, uh... I mean, that was just crazy. Do you remember we were, like, in that little back part? And I remember, like, you peeked your head through. You're like, yo, there's a lot of people here, yeah. bro. Yeah, I was like, wow, that's crazy. 
I think it, that one looked bigger than the Middle East just because it was so wide. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a good night, what honestly. Did, people love to get on stage, bro. Yeah. People literally w- will do anything. Wants, yeah, everyone wants to get on stage in the back. I remember you got mad at um my friend, like, Jalil, and he was like, yo, can you, like, jump up and down or something? But at, Well, yeah. Well, at the Middle East. Well, yeah, bro. They're texting. And it was just, like, literally smoking on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, guys, that ass thanks for coming, bro. But like, <laughs> well, no, like, I just think it's it's so fucking like depressing. It's like you're in the crowd and you're looking at some performing, and then you got people like to your left and right, and they're just texting like they don't care. Yeah, it's like yo, this dude's the center of attention right now. He's performing. You feel me? Yeah. But you love it. you love bringing girls up on stage, so you got to. You got, <laughs> <laughs> you got to. It was a lot of dudes on your Middle East set, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like I saw the footage. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Rob Bernicke, yo. He was like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, Sal took his shirt off, bro. He was ripped. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. He's like, yo, he's in great shape, bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he didn't he never worked for it like me. My pop my pop <laughs> said that too. He's like, I see like you like you getting in shape, you working out. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yo, so when we were really selling tickets, um, well, I think it was before. It was probably before the town. But I went to a, a barbecue at South's crib. It was, it was your, my graduation party. Your graduation party, yeah. And South has like the most classic family of all time. Yeah. Mind you, I've been friend like best friends with South since se- eighth grade. Probably, yeah. I have never spent a night at his house. <laughs> I've met his mom now more, but before we graduated maybe three times. Yeah. Your dad once when he rolled up to Lincoln Middle School with spinners. Yeah, shout out to, shout out to the old <laughs> the, truck. The, old the Dodge truck. Durango. Yeah, the old red fire truck Durango yeah, with was, spinners on it. It was yeah. fire, though. It's like, he'd be like honking the horn. <laughs> it's like blasting 50 cent rolling up. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. It was the same thing with my dad, though. Like, he would, all, he would, same shit. He would roll up to Lincoln Middle School if he would pick me up. <laughs> and he'd be in a van like just bumping music with like all the windows down <laughs> so, I'm here son how are you yeah it was definitely there to pick up the moms uh, oh yeah I definitely think so honestly 100% we'll probably do the same thing with our kids man <laughs> Kevin and I have a recurring joke that like we're like turning into our dads is this so, that scary a little bit yeah definitely it, it definitely does. You, you start you start to notice things consistently. Like I'm kind of like my dad. Yeah, not so much like a bad thing, but just like you definitely want to be your own person. You know, For especially sure. if you got different dreams. You know, you want to do something different than what your your dad did. For sure. Do you do you think you picked up your dad's strongest quality? So. No, he's a very personable guy. He, he, I mean, I, I, when Dad's I, when I want, person, yeah, when I can, like, I can be like my dad, like, make jokes and like put on a smile, but like, I don't do that as much as he does. He's really good at it. I feel like, yeah, I'm the same way. You feel like you have to tap into that in yourself, being personable. Yeah. Oh, it's it's exhausting. It's tough for you. <laughs> yes. You got to yeah. condition yourself like Big Bochi. I don't know. I got to. I thought selling the tickets going around would help, but. Oh, Kev was that struggling. <laughs> he was like, yo, this bitch keeps saying she's going to get back to me tomorrow. He's <laughs> like, yo, they said, can this bitch buy it at the door? <laughs> I was getting frustrated. <laughs> I was just like, yo, like, buy the ticket. Like, I don't have, like, I shouldn't have to entertain you. You should be entertained at the show. I know, but then you also hit me up on some shit. You're like, you don't get it. For you, it's easy. I'm an artist, though. <laughs> I, I'm i in my zone. I'm like, no, that is not an excuse. I, I'm you are human. <laughs> I'm in my zone. Like, I'm not a personable person. I disagree, though. And I think that's another good segue to the tape. I think it, it's really tough for you to to around new people. I think that's just always been like that. But Yeah. But, like, when... It's not on someone to get to know you, though. It's not, like, their obligation. But if they do, by chance, get to know you, they'll understand that, like, you're a pretty personable dude. I think so. I think for sure. I think you're moody as fuck. I am moody. But I don't I don't think I'm personable, though. Like, personal is just, like... You don't think you, don't think you should... Every time you come to, like, a dinner, like, with my family or something, like, you're, like, very comfortable and personable. Well, that's that's completely different. But that's But that's being personable. 
Yeah, but like I know I've seen your family so many times. But that's but what I'm saying. You know you're mean? comfortable. Yeah, it's true. Not, it's that not, is true. It's not just like you're like a fucking blank slate of a person. Yeah, that that is true. I can see that for sure. It is around new people. When I'm around new people, I'm like really quiet. I kind of observe. I stay in the back and just chill. The shadow walker. Yeah, that's what shadow I Shadow Tooks. Yo, Tooks just followed me a couple weeks <laughs> Let's ago. Let's go, Tooks. Yeah. We got we to gotta go back to PC. Kev, so Kev was also, yeah, a consistent character at PC. People th- started to think that he went there. Yes. Shout out to PC. It's fun. It was fun. It was literally like an hour away from my school, so it was like I could go there and do whatever. And it's a whole different state. And come back. And like, <laughs> no one knows me. I'm back in Massachusetts. I I feel you, bro. <laughs> there was uh, so many stories at PC. Oh my god, hilarious, hilarious stories. So many characters though, but but I think that I was thinking about that recently. I was like, dude, I don't know if we'll, I'll ever be in a place where there are so many like characters. Like it's like a TV show. No, for but sure I'm starting to realize in this Boston entertainment scene, there There's are a lot of characters. Also hilarious characters. Bro. Yeah, for sure. This, a lot, and I didn't even know that until you. That's why I started introducing until you. Until you introduced me to a lot of them. It's a lot of characters, which is kind of why I just stated myself. I, mean, I know, but dude, at a certain point, like you're gonna have to be Sally a little bit. You know that. I do. I mean, I show up. I still. I forgot dude's name. Who has the blinds on when he raps? He just dropped a project. The blinds on. Oh, Lord Felix. I went to his. Um, I don't. I've release, never met him. I, I went to his, his release party. You know, I've been going to release parties a lot, but like in like talking to people, but it's just, you know, I got to do it so, so often, you know, I get it. It's tough, but it's just like, it's an effort for me, It, it for, bro. But it is, I know you're going to be like, dude, you've been personal your whole life. You could talk to people your whole life. That's yeah. just not easy for me either. I still get a social anxiety, like going into a room with like fucking 90 rappers i never met before and they're all like dying to be on the show like yeah like how do i navigate conversations like that you know what i'm saying yeah that's true i i understand that part it's just crazy because it's like you can make the music as good as you want but like you still have to have at least some uh connections with people for sure talking to people yeah it's like connecting with people is the most important and that's just going to be tough for you your whole life it's just just like I think it's, it will always be tough. Yeah. I'm starting to navigate it a little more. I'm I was going to say, I'm you're st- doing better. I'm starting to understand, like, you know, it doesn't have to be the way you do it. Like, since I got on the radio I was going to say, two years ago, you would never be on the radio. So you'd never do the radio. Yeah. It's more like, I, I noticed that, like, like you said, when people get to know me, so, like, I'd rather have a one-on-one conversation than a group conversation. So, you know, i just rather do that. That's what I've been trying to do more. Even in a party, I'd rather have a one-on-one conversation with someone and connect that way instead of multiple people and, like, we're talking. Like, I don't work that way. Yeah, I was the same way. That's what, I think PC parties were tough kind of like that because they were always packed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd always be in the corner doing some shit. Yeah. And what's interesting about PC in terms of, like, music, I always wanted to make that, like, party record. But like, kind of corny party I think records. I'm, I think I've marketed Tiger Woods pretty effectively. But, like, I, I mean, like, College party record like frat rap, you know what I mean? Yeah, there but was a time. There was a time where there was a little Sammy Adams. So. Yeah, I was trying to like make something like that, but it's just like it, I don't know why it just doesn't hit. Doesn't in click. It doesn't click in hip hop anymore. I don't think I ever well, did. Well, I love college. That was a mega hit. Oh, that's right? the that's the only one. That's the only like college song. Or I mean, Dirty Money, Jordan Belfort. That's true. That is true. Yeah, you're right. There is a few. But I don't know. There's just there's only so many that like hit. You know? e- EDM was big at PC too. Yeah, and like stuff like acid rap that hits a lot in college. I don't think that there's a niche for that anymore though. Just like tapes that go big in college. There wasn't anyone we were in school, was there? Like that was just a college market. No, nah, probably not. Like I really like. 21 Savage but that wasn't like a college it wasn't a college thing I li- I started like Travis Scott a lot it wasn't like a college thing bro no it wasn't it's the same shit you know when what's what's really interesting is when Chance popped was right around the same time that Jimmy Tatro popped too was it he was in high school Tatro yeah and same shit it was like yeah. a year apart yeah so shout out I, I've i never given this dude homage but but I wouldn't have never started probably I wouldn't be here without teacher i don't think ever the call it the college stuff right like just, the, just to know that like holy shit like the freshman yeah like holy shit you can like 
hustling in college and like I didn't know how much work it was going to be ever. But I was just like, yo, he's just like making funny videos and like he they're like hilarious and then everyone like knows him on his campus and shit. And now he's in movies. Now he's that guy. Yeah. He's hilarious, bro. He is. He and I I like the way his career is growing. Like he's like going like this. You think so? Bro, he just he just did a voiceover for this movie Smallfoot. Oh. Like big like Pixar DreamWorks type. Oh wow, that's crazy. Cuz I'm starting to notice like what well, you said, you told me earlier like once you once you people image you in a certain way, it's hard to get out of it. Typecast for sure. Yeah. And he was like the college guy, you know. I, yeah, I think he's done a Well, that's his also his shtick, I think too. Yeah. I mean, he's I don't trying wanna, to get out of it. I've seen an interview. He said he was trying to get out of it. I, I don't want to box him either, but but he's a funny dude, bro. He's always going to be all right. Yeah, he does stand up. Yeah, you got any stand up on the way? Nah. We've been talking. Me and I, I've been talking, talking about, about it. I want to do it, but it's it's a craft, man. It's like something you got to work at it for years, honestly, in my opinion. You think so? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, there's some natural people who are just naturally gifted at like being on a stage by themselves and being funny with just a mic and a, a, a stand. I think I like n- not even a suck my own tippity, but I'm a pretty funny dude, man. I, when I got on, people don't know this, when I got on stage, it was a much different story. You did good. I did terrible. Yeah, it's a, it's hard. It's really it's hard. I told you my stick was like. So I went to this club undisclosed, alone, undisclosed. Yeah. And I, I've like had some. I was like, yo, I'm like pretty good on the fly. I'll be able to like you know make people laugh for like five minutes the five minutes felt like two hours okay <laughs> right yeah it's like battle rap like you could be a really good rapper but a terrible battle rapper or you could be a really good rapper and a terrible person that makes music you know exactly and the fucking light was on top of my head it was hot and i like yeah. start, i was like oh fuck and so it's just it's different it's a very different type of performance it's mm-hmm. like that's why improv i think is easier for me yeah but that's like a script it's like theatrical in a way it's like very scripted and you know you ha- it's weird because you can't really see the crowd but you have to like feel their energy and like kind of feed off yeah. that and that's why like everything i do I, I write that's why when we talk about it like doing stand-up i'm like i have to write it down just like battle rap too music too like i don't freestyle and, like i have to write it down make sure i know it you know it's well, hard. It's a craft. Like it's really hard to do stand like i commend everybody that's why so many snl writers come from stand-up I think any successful entertainer, I commend regardless. It's tough, bro. Like, it is. It's exhausting shit. Yeah. It's a craft, honestly. For sure. It's like, you got to be on all the time, man. It's like. And handle being booed. Like, it's inevitable. If you want to make it, you're going to be booed. You're going to have rough nights. Take tons of L's. Yeah. Well, do you remember what Jerry said about Jay Leno? Yeah. I, I. what he said it stick like what he said it honestly sticks with me since I've been in his 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 house. We're referring to Jerry Pilata, my current boss, also a guest on the show. Yeah, South's friend too. So <laughs> him and South do some work together. <laughs> but like we went to his house. I don't even know what you call it. What do you call it? A loft. Co- a loft. I was like inspired. Fat. Inspired. C- completely inspired. And like I was picking his brain out. He was telling me like he just wrote books, and like it just caught on and like. Now he does shows and, and just, like, I try to, impl- like, really implement it to music, honestly. Because that really <laughs> inspired me. Like, no lie. He just worked, bro. He did. And it was just, like, he was cre- It's not that different from music. He created a story and kept creating and creating until it caught on. He never slowed down. He still is not. He's, like, that's why I, like, that's why it's one situation where I can, like, totally work with my boss. And, yeah. And have a boss because, like. He's like on the go, man. Like I, I sure. hope we're both at the same. If we make it to sixty five, we're doing the same shit at sixty five. Yeah, I hope so. Cause that, I was like, wow. But he built. That was one thing I learned. He really built. He wasn't successful. Successful. Till he was like thirty eight. He started writing books. When he was like twenty nine. Oh, see, yeah. That's. I don't know if I can wait that long. Yeah, bro. that's that's, that's a sixteen long time. years, man. Come on. Yeah. But then also in sixteen years, we're only gonna be forty. True. It's it's hard, you know. I love, but I don't. And there's nothing wrong with being successful. Like I don't know. In 2019, it's like we have to be successful in our 20s, but like, it's all about grind. It's a fake pressure, though. It it, it really is, but you know, you still gotta try to figure it out. I want to be successful, though, dude. I want to be like huge in the city. I that's yeah. just the truth. I think social media makes us 
feel pressure. They've been fucking me up. Yeah, I, I've I've gotten off it, honestly. You got to be on it though. I only get on it to promote it. I can't like I can't do the social media because it, it gives me anxiety and like depressed, honestly. Because it's just like they'll show you a fake picture, like making you think that like they're doing so great in their life, but you have to do this by this age. But in reality, it's just it's just a facade, you know. I also think it breeds. I think. Well, it's a good segue, bro, because I told you like a couple days ago, bro. I've been like, you can see, like I broke out, bro. I've been dumb anxious, mm-hmm. and I never want to admit, just you know, pridefully, I never want to admit that I'm like feeling like real anxiety. But dude, if you get too caught up in your phone, and like, mind you, I'm over here like pushing shit out all the yeah. time. It's like you get really caught up. You do, for sure, and it's just like you, especially when you're working your ass off like you're working every day at something like you do so many things i feel like i do a lot of things like i "All right, I gotta do this gotta do that i gotta do this and you look at your phone and someone's already like you know making it or something like and they put extra pressure on you it makes you go even harder less sleep more stress which is crazy at like 20s like you have so much stress and it's just like you're going insane i know, you know? It, it's that but also like you got to develop tools bro to be able to use it effectively yeah know? for sure you still I, you still need it but i'm just saying don't look at it f- for like i don't know if it was up to me i wouldn't even follow people <laughs> classic self but yeah i'm just i'm <laughs> just saying like i don't know like you do need it like what you said to promote and like connect mm-hmm. with people but in terms of like what you see on your timeline like i would i wouldn't really even want to follow someone there's like, is that picking? Yeah. Oh, my shit's just a little bit lower than yours, but I'll just pick it up and post. But um, there's like, it's 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 like a weird tool. It's like, yo, this thing can help you a lot, but if you abuse it, man, gonna fuck you over. Yeah. I wouldn't. What's? I wouldn't. I don't think I'd be in the position I'm in right now if I obviously I couldn't make my own show and run it like I want to run it if I didn't have social, social media. media yeah for sure and yeah. I'm and I'm I'm really like my game right now is like yo I gotta push out like good content all the time you yeah. know yeah it's definitely a curse and a blessing for sure I think you could benefit and I know it's not you if you just like hop on Instagram live and like talk to like three people this is the south that everyone loves man <laughs> I, don't know. I think people are really gonna like this interview too yeah would you of say course. how how would you how would you rank it right now? Yeah, out of all of them. Well, it's just we're just talking, talking right? We're yeah. friends, so it's easy. Interview. I feel you. I also want to make sure I I can get as much out of you in terms of like showing that you know sometimes South comes off as a cold dude and he's quiet, <laughs> but he's actually a nice guy. Man. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. Blouth. That's me. Hey, what was your name before Sir South? Southside. Whack. Whack. Very whack. I don't even know why I changed it. I just didn't like it. Would you ever just change your name to South instead of Star South? Yeah. I want to, but it's just too bland, I think. What King South? I think I would rather have people call me South. You know? There's people what about Blouth? No. There's people that no call bonner. me Sir South. <laughs> <laughs> there's people that call me, like, yo, Sir South. Like, just, just, call, just say South. <laughs> this dude's a diva. Like, just say South. That's all. Here's my <laughs> autograph. See ya. <laughs> I think, um... Well, there, there is a battle rapper named Southside, right? I don't think so. Well, there's a rapper named Southside? Maybe. There's or probably, a producer, there's producer, a t- producer. Oh, yeah, Southside. There's definitely a producer named Southside. Southside. Yeah. yeah. Southside on the track. No, it's just Southside. You, you don't have a... Pro- so South produced a lot of his own beats on the tape. You don't have a producer tag yet, huh? I don't. You want to get one? Mm, I'm pro- I'm probably so- not, because I don't... I don't like, I would understand if I, like, I sold beats to other people. Rappers, I think it'd be cool that people know that you did uh, some of the production on your tape. I mean, it'll be in the track list. I, I'm gonna put like produced by Stu Kid, produced by Milo, produced by. Are you you would be from Adam? Two piece. Me and Adam made that one together. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Adam made that one together. What do you think of the of the tape? You listen to it. You, you want me to give it completely honest? Completely honest. Okay, we're at like. Fi- if I have to cut this up, we're at like fifteen hundred bar, fourteen fifty bars. I think that 
it is one of the worst tapes I've ever heard. <laughs> I think that again, it's it's very different. Mind you, I have a I got a pretty good scope of what's going on. It's very different than anything else I think is coming out of the city, and it's totally reflective. And you can tell that you're you're trying to swing and let people understand more of a story of like why you feel certain things. And I think that's probably what I think will grab most. And that's what I like most. I also think that like you're one tape away from having, let's say five months, six months. I think you're like five, six months away. If you just keep hacking away at it to have like a, a good club record, that's like really bouncing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also, it's like you can listen to it from front to back. There's a lot of s- sample, it's like soul sample. Yeah. I mean, I can't sing, so I was I just figured, like, you know, it's hard to get singers on your mixtape, <laughs> you know? It's hard, to, it's hard to work with singers. Bro. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, I just thought, like, putting samples in where, like, that can be your main, like, vocals, melodies, their singing, mm-hmm. and me just rapping, like, I try to find a way to get around it. Would you say my analysis tape's good? Yeah. It definitely is. It definitely front to back, and like, I'm explaining. It's a story. It is a story. It's not like a. You, you definitely could listen to one track. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like you have to listen from front to back. But it's definitely you'll understand it once you listen to it. I think some of the shit that stuck out with me most too is like, to be honest, was some of the shit. And we we don't have to talk about it if you don't want. But some of the shit when you were talking about like being depressed. Yeah. And like I don't even mean to get grim, but South is been through it since high school right up and down Mm -hmm. and i think this was the first time for me as your friend that i was like damn okay at least he's like he's trying to clarify or like simplify why he thinks he's feeling some of the ways he's feeling yeah i listen to a lot of kid cuddy you know do you think that will make you more depressed though if you listen to someone that's depressing yes it does for but sure. It, but it also it also heightens kind of like your music ability cuz he was so honest and able to like say it in a way that's like it's not so blurted out, but like he can put it he'll make you feel it. He make you feel it too, like as if you're going through it. So I kind of like try to not implement his sound, but like try to do that. Make you f- listen to it and make you feel it too. Mm-hmm. You know? Cuz when I hear Kikuddy, I feel it. I feel it when he go like I feel like as if I'm going through it the same thing as he's going through at that time. So like, you know, that's he he was a major influence on it. When would you ever th- would you ever say you feel like you're fully not depressed? Hmm. I don't even mean to get grim cuz sometimes even when you talk about depression it makes you more depressed, but yeah, but um fully not probably not cuz you know, like we were talking about earlier stress, you know, social media. That's just and that's like human us, though. Yeah, us wanting to make it is just like I'm always going to feel like okay, I got to do this, I got to do that. I'm always going to feel like there's a time. There's a clicking time for us to make it. So I don't. I don't even know if that's depressed, but it's stress. It's just stress. That's just that's anxiety. Yeah. So it's. I guess I do feel like I'm not depressed at all, but like I still feel stress. You know what I mean? But sometimes stress is good. You need it. Yeah, you definitely do. It makes you go harder. For sure. There's also like. I mean, when shit starts getting like bad for you. Yeah. Does it, does it come in waves? Is that how it happens, or like does something trigger it usually? Something usually triggers it. Uh, it was definitely in high school something triggered it. But as I got older... Was it the ACL tear? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that and, like, girl issues, obviously. And then, like, once I got older, it was kind of like it wasn't a thing. Like, it wasn't a trigger. It was kind of like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Something happened, which made me feel even more worse. It's, it's scary when, like, you don't know what's making you feel that way. You feel like you're in a, a dark room and... Any step you make, you could fall off a ledge, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like I, I ended up getting therapy and stuff like that, so I'm doing way better, you know? When – so was it, like, gradual when you pulled out of it or, like – I just realized, like, I want to do stuff that makes me happy. Like, I don't care about money. I don't care about – Oh, come on, Kev. You also did text me say, yo, how are we going to get rich? That's a fact. <laughs> I mean, when I say I don't care about money, I mean, like, I'm not – like, I want to do something that makes me happy, basically mm-hmm. what I'm saying, and find a way to get money from that, you know? So, like, after, like, going through the press, it was just, like, a lot of stress on you, like, from your parents or whatever. But then you realize, like, just do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. I feel you. 
and find a way to get money from it. That's 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 what I try to do. So now I, I feel way better. I mean, you also talk about it in the tape a lot, like just like, and this is something as friends we we've like never really talked about. But when you got your ACL tear, bro, you were talking a lot about taking pills. I was I was hooked on oxycontin. Fucking wild shit. And and for reference, again, I don't want to be like too exposing here because this is like real relationship shit. But Seth never told any of us really that he was going through it. I had to kind of start picking it apart that like, yo, something is not adding up. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when you go through it, like, not not to. Well, you had an addiction like alone. Yeah, but I I, I helped out like uh, uh, as much as I could. But yeah, I mean, my my thing has always been like not to discredit anyone who actually is going through it, but like, I feel like when you're actually going through it, you're not tweeting it, you're not make like you're not crying like saying things you know what i mean like i feel like some people just say it for attention like i was really going through it so i wasn't tweeting it. i wasn't going to my friends saying these things like i was trying to deal with it how i knew how to deal with it by myself like when you're actually going through depression you don't want to go through depression you know what i mean yeah for sure so you're not gonna tweet it or instagram it saying like leave me alone still you would for attention. you would think you would tell the people closest to you that and i know it's tough that like holy fuck and you're also like a sheltered dude but like holy fuck dude I am like having a terrible time right now. Uh, yeah. Well, that was high school. I think I've gotten better with it now since I've gotten older. For sure. You told me there was a recent time where you were like, "Yo, bro, I'm not doing okay." Yeah, but I, I've gotten better. I've physically gotten help myself. Like I went and got help on my own account. So like I know how to handle it now. You, you think it's the best therapy is just talking about it? Yeah, I think so. In exercise. Exercise helps a lot. I work out pretty much every day. It's it's good structure, I think. And, like, I don't know. It, you just feel better. You feel more accomplished every day. You know what I mean? Just imagine if you feel like you're getting healthier every day. I know that. Too. Everyone says I'm a psycho for waking up wicked early and working out. but it's, you, you wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> 5.45. Oh, okay. And I, today I woke up at 7. Okay. Good. And I hate myself for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like getting shit done, bro. That's what makes me feel good. Yeah. That's, every time you get something done, you always feel better. I, I understand it for sure, you know. But I take it too far sometimes. I, like, my biggest problem, I think your problem will be, you know, just, like, the tendency to think negatively. My biggest problem will just be, like, putting myself into overdrive, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. That's just something, as, like, time goes on, we're just going to have to, like, navigate it a lot easier. You know? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it can help in certain cases to what? Like overwork yourself. No, it doesn't. That's, I think so. That's why I got acne all over my face right now, bro. Real shit, though. Like, nah, I feel you. Yeah. Who's getting shorties with acne on their face, bro? <laughs> I'm a professional athlete. I'm a professional athlete. There was also talk in the tape where you were talking, like, about, like, kind of why you've had issues with chicks yeah and that's that was that was like the the initial idea of the tape <laughs> like the first draft was like that it was like the first half was going to be very misogynist very angry very hard though like i have a song called that time of the month like it was very misogynist but and then like the second half was going to be explaining why i felt that way you know double standards i had that I scrapped off of it because it just wasn't my beat and like, but then, you know, I started feeling different and more I've gone to therapy, more I understood like why some girls do some things, like why females, like I was just putting myself in their shoes and like understanding more. I, I just, I just don't understand things and I'm just understanding and I like, it's still there on the tape. It's just not as vulgar, you know? <laughs> wow. Was there a time where like y'all being way too disrespectful? Yes. Very, very. <laughs> and it, like I was listening. That's because like when you're feeling di- you ever like just like with your videos like you're in a different mind state and you like you go back to it you're like what was i thinking or like i I don't feel the same way or like this is kind of like not immature but just like you get caught up in the moment yeah you get caught up in the moment so i went back to a lot of like the first draft i had and i was just like i don't want, like no one's gonna listen to, well women aren't gonna listen to this but there's also something it's like as f- severe as your feelings may be there's also something that's like transcendent about that, that like yeah he's really being this honest that he really that's what i want he really dislikes a lot of the women in his life right now that's what i wanted because 
I don't think anyone has gone has done that idea. It probably has, but like I don't think anyone has. It's the truth. Gone I mean, that you're being honest. Yeah. That honest about the opposite sex. I don't think anyone has. So like that's what that's what ultimately. Well, girls have me. done it on dudes, but dudes yeah. have never done it on chicks. Exactly. So I was like, that'd be a great idea, but it's just like when I went back to, it, I was just like, I don't. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll leave that for somebody else. Yeah, I was like, yeah. It's too. It's it was way too like from a marketing tip though. If you just made like I hate like I hate bitches tape, bro. It would go huge on the internet. <laughs> I love All Girls Are the Same by Juice World. I love that song. That's a little more like nice about his like emotions <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, it's not really like you're an object, but like <laughs> fuck you. It's a great song. You think that's giving you the most issues in life? Is are we dealing with girls? Mm, I used to. Not anymore. Thankfully. Why? Uh, just because I don't know. Like maybe because I grew up with just my mom, so I've looked at women like at a high standard because my mom was like to me just I just a great person, you know. So like I think every woman should be like that. Every woman should be like. I mean, my mom never brought anyone around the house like any other male. So like, and like she always worked and like, so I just always hold every girl like that to standard. standard. So when I when I don't see it, I'm just like. I don't get that. You know what I mean? You still feel that way? I understand it, why some girls do feel different a little more. You know, some people are just brought up different. I think that... I try not to think about it. I remember we talked about it. You was talking about, like, well, you try to look, well, you look for girls in, like, this place. Try to go to the library. <laughs> That's what I've been, I've been doing. I've been, you know, looking for better places. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the club and the bar. Yeah, try the library. Yeah, I've, I've been looking for better places. Do you ever think like, yo, I could totally live without chicks? I try to, honestly. I tell, I try to tell myself that all the time. Like, I'm just gonna be so focused that like I'm not gonna worry about. I've anything. done it, bro. It's hard, but you can do it. Cause you're right. I did do that for like a week, like. Doing that One and week. and not even watching porn, like you get a lot done. Like you have a lot of energy. Ah! yeah, you have a, you get a lot of energy, but it's a lot of built up aggression. <laughs> so, so I'm just I don't know. Imagine that, right? Like no girls. I don't really even watch porn, but like no porn. Right? Yeah. Fasting, tons of coffee, right? Oh, that's a lot of aggression. See, see the veins in my head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole lot of aggression. There's a, uh, yeah. I, I also I've started to realize we've gotten a little bit older, bro. Like, pause. We're really not that old. We're not old. We're not getting older. But I've started to realize, like, yo, girls are just they think much differently than we do. Like yeah. their thought process is just way different. Yeah. If, I just try now. I don't. I honestly don't even dwell on it like I used to. You know, like our friends, like next couple of years are gonna start getting married and shit, right? It's crazy, crazy, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> count me out, <laughs> count me out. Yeah, facts. Me too. But what if it's what if it's on some shit that like they're like, yeah, but then you meet that right one, man. Mm-hmm. I can't see it happening in the foreseeable future, but yeah, me either. Also, to our future wives, man. Sorry, we're talking about you like this. <laughs> Yeah. If we get married. If. Big if. Keyword honestly. if. I F. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's just tough, bro. It's just like it's a time it's a time commitment too. It's like right now, like imagine having your time divided in half, you know. Yeah, so and so many girls, at least the girls from my neighborhood are like also worried about having children. I'm just like Already? Yeah. And I'm just like not at this age, just like they want to get one in like mid twenties, late twenties. I'm just like, I don't know. It's like a- eighteen. You kind of became became free from your parents, going to college. Oh, you feel that way? I felt that like twenty two. Yeah. Either way, but I'm just saying, like, if you have a kid in your twenties, it's like you had like four or six years to yourself. Like, that's not. I don't think that's a lot. Also, you can't be. You can't focus on doing you, your own thing. Your own thing. Yeah, that's always been my thing. So that's that's always been why I haven't really been in relationships because I don't I want to focus on me every day. Will it be Kevin Turner the third? I will be the Godfather, right? Of course. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Fuck! 
little nephew. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for some of my friends to start getting married, though. The wedding's going to be hilarious. Oh, wedding's going to be ridiculous. I'm going to love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right up your alley. Oh, for sure. Wedding crashers, too. It's going to be fun. So, how are you going to roll the tape out? I've been thinking about it. Obviously, the promo run, I guess, what you want to call it. This would be this would be a good start. And um, I'm honestly thinking about doing freestyles on, you know, 90, 98.1. Yeah, so self, week. self kick the freestyle. Yeah, you got to get on your phone, though. You got to go live and do it. I would just do it. Yeah. Go on Instagram live and do it. But, yeah, South was freestyling last night. Yeah. And that was hilarious. Yeah, I, I'll definitely get better. But I'm, I'm definitely going to kick a freestyle every week, you know, t- and probably plug it in after every freestyle. Something mad organic about that. Yeah, it's old school to kick a freestyle and just say, like, yo, tape comes soon. And also, I'm hoping to work with Everyday Robbie. You know, I'm dropping a single soon. Big Def- Bochy just gave you the big kick. Come on, give me a handshake. <laughs> I got a bunch of videos cut up for the event we threw last week, and we made sure we got a South song on there. So, that, so you should have gotten at least, like, five, six tags by now, right? Oh, I got a lot. It's a bunch of songs, too. They they posted a lot of songs. Like, each yeah, every person. Pieces, yeah. yeah. I'm on IG Live. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do it on Golden Deer. Uh, so yeah, but I thought you said you were gonna start. You were gonna like show up at people's cribs and play music. Oh yeah, that's a given though. I'm gonna go to like all my friends and I'm gonna just post like who wants to listen to the tape. I'm gonna go to wherever they are and just play the tape front to back for them. Let them listen to it. See, what, give me their honest opinion. You know, and but it's it's almost finished. It's pretty much it's ninety ninety five percent finished. I think you that just need the cover art and the I have like two or three more songs to go to get mixed. Okay, you thinking about the next one after this? Uh, I think you should. I think you should drop. I one. think I'm thinking of like a seven songs, six songs, like something really like different. Ever seen him? No. <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. I was going to ask you at the start. Mm-hmm. A couple of ice chips, a couple of ice chips. Um, we ran the episode six months ago. How, have things, how do you think things have changed since then for you? I've definitely gotten a lot of more connections, gotten better music. I've been doing a lot more, a lot more, like, from the podcast that you do, I see more like successful people and where they're at and how they got there. So I've been doing a lot of studying and like navigating through a lot of obstacles differently, you know. Also, you're a little more ingratiated with Boston music now. Yeah, that too. I've been going to a lot of like release parties and like at the studio. Yeah, I've been to the studio, the studio a lot lately, getting the mixes done and meeting new artists and producers. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I used to hit up South when I was starting up the show. Like, yo, you know this party? Like, I don't fucking know them, <laughs> man. <laughs> I know nobody. Like, I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> so you are a lone wolf, right? Now this is me asking you a question, not as a friend, but as a host personality. You yeah. know what I mean? You are a lone wolf, man. But you do realize if someone now is going to pop up out of Boston. Like on a commercial tip, and even if that's not that important to you, it's not a big deal. It has to happen with a bunch of people. Like it has to be a wave. I really feel that way. Mm. Do you feel that way? No. Oh, uh, you know how Stiz came up with Swagger Dick and like oh, I see. That's what you mean. Yeah, I guess I see it, but I see it more as like not necessarily we're all connected, but like I don't know. Like, everyone in the studio, I feel like, that in that way. Not like we have to be in a group. You know what I mean? I think it'd be a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting. I don't. I have no clue where boss music will be in a year. Where, it, where would you want to be in one year? Like On a tour. Got to start making fast moves. For sure. For sure. I'm trying to think of... I have no clue... I know this show is going to be not 
to be humble, I know it's going to be like very relevant in Boston in a year. Like not just music and entertainment, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. They counted me out after college. <laughs> you guys thought Golden Deer was a college thing. Bye. Boy. Bye. <laughs> Shout out Mr. H. My fucking dog. Facts. Uh, Who's your favorite character at PC? Jordan. Vordy. <laughs> yeah, by far. Who else? How, how would Jordan walk into the mist? Like, Jordan, come back. That's my guy. <laughs> like, nah, fuck that. I don't know who else. There's a lot. A whole lot. We don't want to name the names. It's like, dude, you do so much coke, bro. <laughs> dude, you smoke. You take so many Zans, bro. Okay. He's like, okay, bag. Or what do you call him? Zan boy. Zan man. No, it was. Pill boy. Uh, some with a B. Blow boy. It's like, okay, blow boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, you do more drugs. <laughs> Classic talk. Okay. Did I miss? Have I missed anything? I still want to keep going, but did I, have I miss anything? I don't think so. Do you think it's easier being an interviewer on a show or being interviewed? I'm an interviewer. You think so? No, that being interviewed is the easiest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm just ch- chilling. You're just chilling. <laughs> uh, you, your feet good, though? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> You've also upped your swag game a lot recently, I've noticed. Think so? Yeah, the sneaks are more clean. Your shit's a little more together. <laughs> <laughs> Try and keep the haircut fresh like Bochi. Oh, yeah. The haircuts make me feel better. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. You gotta be ready. You been seeing my snaps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bro, fucking... These people get pissed at it. It's hilarious. They're like, dude, how many haircuts you gonna get a week, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of money, bro. I'm like, yo, we're all making money, bro. 20 bucks a week is not the biggest deal. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy seeing so many people, like, our age, like, living in, like, high-class apartments. Uh, who do you know doing that? So many kids from PC. Really? What's what? Well, what's considered high-class to you? Affluence. I don't know. Penthouse. Oh, it's like no, Penthouse no, no. and Seaport. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, not high-class. It's, like, nice apartments. I'm sure their parents help pay for it, though, but. Some people are paying for it on their own. I don't, I don't, well, you were talking about this, like, yeah, but I really want to get my own crib. Yeah. You still want to? Yeah. Is it as pressing as it was over the summer when you were like, dude, I really just got to get out of my house? No, it wasn't as pressing because now I just, I'm, I've am i been so busy. So like, I don't yeah, even be I, in the house. Even if I'm in the house, I'm writing or like trying to record. So was there a, do you, so I don't, again, I can cut this too. I'm actually not. I'm not gonna cut. It. I'm not gonna cut it. I don't want to edit. But the South lives in a like a very packed house with a ton of people. Yeah, my and, whole family. And it's not in Hyde Park. It's not. <laughs> and so when you go to his house, there's a lot going on at all times. Mm-hmm. But you still manage to isolate yourself in like the attic and record, <laughs> which is totally dope, bro. I think people yeah. want to lo- know that. Yeah, I'm in the attic. Uh, me and my mom's in the attic. I have my own room, obviously. He has his own room. And I just record whenever, like, there's not people there. And, and that's how I was able to record the mixtape. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not a social person. You say that now, you're fine. Do, do you think now, like, how, how much did you value going to school in Lincoln? And, like, growing up and, like, being around my house a lot. Have you noticed an, Now an a impact, lot. You've noticed it impacted you a lot? Yeah, now a lot, and I'm I'm grateful for it. At the time, definitely I didn't really like it. You didn't like LS. I liked LS. You did not like, like Sudbury Kids. I didn't like Sudbury Kids. I liked LS though. It was like a big school. And it was huge, and I liked it. But like, yeah, I didn't like Lincoln Middle well, School. Why? Because I was going through puberty in middle school. <laughs> so like, it's tra- mega puberty. Yeah, it's trash, and like when you're going through puberty. So like I are, didn't like it then. Yo, you felt like an emotional teen. When I was going to well, I wasn't a teenager. I was going through puberty. I, I, was, like, like I was like twelve. You're like six. <laughs> I was like eleven and twelve. So but Kev was the one who like let me in on all this like distorted shit growing up. Yeah, I was like eleven and twelve going through puberty. So I didn't like being in Lincoln, but I was already past it. 
so when I hit high school, I was already just like a man. I, yeah, I was just chilling. Like I didn't have to worry about like my voice cracking and like girls or like I mean girls and like Kevin, shy or anything. Kevin had, like a business portfolio. <laughs> 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 like showed up with his resume. <laughs> yeah, I was chilling in high school. I mean, of course you go through shit, but like in terms of like I don't know. How have you seen it impact you? Like growing up at like going to an all white school. Oh man, and, so like, much. Like when I go to hang out with my friends in the, in the city, you know, in the hood, like, there's a huge difference. Not so much that I can't connect with them because they're my friends, but there's a difference. Like, even the way I dress, talk, think about certain things, like, it's it's different. Like, I'm not so one-sided on, you know, yeah, black lives matter. I mean, black lives matter, but I mean, like, I'm not so, like... You can I see look at things from different perspectives because mm-hmm. I've seen different perspectives. And it's just like a lot of people look at me so crazy for that. That's what Cake Swag was saying too. She went to Mecco and she was like, I'm totally, totally grateful for the experience. Yeah. Because she like she knows kind of how wh- for the majority of white people think and she also knows like the majority of like what black people think. Yeah. You, it, yeah. yeah. And it was so crazy. I was having this conversation. I'm so glad I grew up with Mecco, bro. Yeah. Eternally grateful for it. It's a different perspective. But some, it's not the same for everybody. I was talking to this girl, uh, like, two weeks ago. And she, she was in Mecco. And, like, she didn't have the same experience at all. She was, like, she I didn't have... It. Yeah, she didn't have, like, well, white friends like that. She didn't play a sport. So it was, like, she didn't really... She, she had no way of connecting to, like, other kids. So, like, she didn't like it. Well, our circumstance was a little different, too, though, because you'd be at my crib, like, every weekend. Yeah. Or a week. I enjoyed it. I cool. loved Lincoln. Mm-hmm. I also, I think it's hilarious how some of the kids we went to middle school with, like where they're at now, like no matter what the story is, it's like mad interesting seeing it. Yeah, there's so many people that like. Well, I wonder where Daryl is. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know where they are. I'm interested to see where a lot of kids are. For, so for reference, Daryl, I hope sometimes we, sometime soon we can reconnect, but. There was a kid me and Seth grew up with who was, like, the wildest kid of all time. He was fucking crazy. He was tapped. And and we – he was just, like, very wild. Always getting in trouble and shit. Like, he brought a knife to school once. Just, like, sh- like flash it to me in the bathroom. Like, all this wild shit. He's like, I'm looking for the white rabbit. I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> One time he, like, rolled out a bunch of toilet paper from the bathroom and he had a lighter. So, and he was going to light it so he could see like the trail of paper burn up (laughs) into the bathroom. (laughs) I was like, I was just watching way too much cartoon network, bro. (laughs) But he, he left in fourth grade and he was like one of like literally the most, I thought he was always hilarious, but he was one of the most problematic students. And then me and South went on this DC trip in eighth grade down to, and we had stopped at a rest stop and there was Daryl, so calm, <laughs> like had glasses on. He's like, "Hey guys, how are you?" He was like, "Yeah." He was like, I, "I'm not, I'm not proud of my past." <laughs> We're like, "Daryl, is that you, bro?" <laughs> yeah, that was. I don't know. Shout out to him. He was like hugging the teachers. He's like, "I'm so sorry for the trauma I've caused you." I'm like, "Damn, they must have lithium pumping through this kid's veins, bro." <laughs> Put a tranquilizer on him. Like a cop next to him with a taser. <laughs> so fucking scared right now. <laughs> Shout out to Daryl, man. I told you I saw that. Uh, I saw Theo Vaughn live. Mm-hmm. Oh, my fault. He's dope, bro. Uh, do you like any comedians right now? Besides Cat Williams. Probably not. You like Cat Williams? I love Cat Williams. It's my favorite. It's like, the bitch! <laughs> Like, give out the the adult drugs. <laughs> what you said? Everything. Uh, what <laughs> he was said, it? All of the, he's like, and ev- they like they gave me everything, like all the drugs, the hard drugs. He was like, the bitch made me do a backflip. <laughs> 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 the backflip on stage. He's like, I was up, I was down. He's like, bitch. <laughs> he's, like, I, he's like, I took one joint, then a, a beer, and then I was out. <laughs> He's always like coated in sweat after his shit. Oh, yeah. I would have to do drugs, bro, to be like him. Holy fuck. He's up. Shout out to Cat Williams. He, yeah, he's hilarious. All right, so for, plug your IG, Twitter, Instagram. Everything. Sir South. Sir underscore South. 
Uh, new battle. I'm having a battle in in Rhode Island in Providence. It's April sixth. It's gonna be on my IG page, my Twitter page, my Facebook page. Come out, support. Uh, new project dropping. A glamorous death in May. I don't know which day yet. He's just working on getting the mixes done. Yeah, mix is done. And featuring Bochi. Featuring Bochi, Michael Christmas, uh Big Lino. Uh Milo's on it, Stoop K produced it, Karen, Sam Green, all of them. It's gonna be great, honestly. Excited. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about battle rap in Boston. Cause we gotta get these other two people up here. Mm-hmm. So South is one of the only battle rappers I'm familiar with, and South is has achieved success in battle rap. No, I would not say not ultimate success. Yeah, not you're not major league commercial, but yeah. you've had solid battles where you've won a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is the status of battle rap in Boston? Mm, it's like you got to go out to like New York to do it. Yeah, you can't do well, it. Well, you can do it. Like there's things here, but like not in Boston, like in Lynn, Peabody, but it's just like Springfield, but um it's all it's all you got to go out in New York to like really become big. That's why only a few of us really have gotten any sort of success from it. You know, it was Chilla Jones. Chilla Jones Excel 40 bars. And it's me and another guy named Chris Mills. We we came up together in Bo- in Boston. That's a Spanish kid. Uh, I don't think he's Spanish. He's just light skinned. Spanish kid. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, I think he was at one of the. He was at the battle line. Mm-hmm. He was. That, th- I think that would be so interesting. If that's like t- has never happened in Boston, then like why can't you just try to like hustle it and like start setting up battles, man? I would love to set up a battle. It's just hard doing in Boston, man, because nobody, people that go there aren't really for battle rap, so. I'll be rapping and people will be talking over it. And it's going to be, it's just, it's too much. When you go to New York, there's no bar in the back of the, the room. So, like, everyone's there for battle rap. So, it's, like, it's quiet and, and like, the, the atmosphere is just completely different, you know? Just totally. like when I battled Excel. It was, like, the atmosphere, that's, there's not usually places like that, you know? <laughs> like, battle rap, like, battles We've talked about this before. Yeah, battles don't happen there like that. But... It was like people was there for the battle rap. In other places in Massachusetts and New England, it's usually like there's a bar and people are going there for the bar. So they're talking, yelling, laughing. So why not let's just throw a dope one? It's hard. It's hard. Everything's hard. It is hard. It's hard to find like good battle rappers in Boston, honestly. Like Chilla Jones, Excel 40, they would charge probably a lot. They would, to be honest. You started to make some bread though, right? Maybe a little here and there. A little here and there. This is mad awkward about money. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know, bro. <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to, like, just, you know, get bigger. You can do that till you're 80. Battle rap, right? Yeah. Who's the biggest battle rapper in the world right now? Disaster? That's hard to say. I mean, Charlie Clips is on Wild and Out right now. You can see this on Wild and Out, you know. Twerk. So. New Jersey Twerk, Hollow oh. Dawn. You know, they got Drake. Oh, Sue Surf. Sue Surf. He's a good rapper. He's a good rapper. Hum Beats is on his tape. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot. A lot of battle rappers are getting more famous. Yeah, it will. I feel like battle rap it's slower, but it's like uncharted territory. Like YouTubers, you know how like, like Logan Paul and Jake Paul kind of like they were the first ones to really like establish themselves as YouTubers. Yeah, like who knows how big you can be from it. Yeah, for sure. I think we should do a panel though, and forty bars Excel. Let's run one. Us four in this room. I know nothing about it, but I I would like to mediate it. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I'd definitely do it. But they don't do it full time, right? Maybe Chilla Jones does, and maybe he like hosts parties and shit too. And he's right? king of the dot champion right now. He just won the chain. Chilla Jones is. Yeah. Oh, let's get him up too. So he he might be doing full time at this point. Maybe, maybe I don't know. How do you get paid full time? You just win battles or like sponsorships and just, yes, you get paid to do ho- host battles. You can like, you know, they, you know, there's there's a lot of things that happen from it. Like you know, people want you to do some films or do other stuff or like sponsors. There's but, a lot of stuff, but you can't really reach that like apex, apex. You know, no, you're not you're not getting eighty eighty G's or hundred G's really. Well, Roan is now full time for Barstool. Shout out to Roan. Roan's one of my favorites, battle rappers. 
he was very introspective about his career. I'm trying to find like where that's good on the mic. I think it's like right here. But he was very introspective about his career. Like he wrote an article. He was like my 20s. He's like just about to turn 30. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. I read it. I'm a, I'm a fan of Rome. I was trying he's to know really, Barstool. As a oh, you writer, were as a writer before. Yeah. Before they blew up, or now? No, no, no. Like maybe a year when I was in college still. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work out. That's no, funny. You know who's been on Barstool? Who? You. Yes. I'm and, saying that's and, a writer. And Barrett. Oh, for the accent. Uh, <laughs> and Carl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? Shout out to Carl. Shout out to my auntie, man. It's actually hilarious, though. So. Yeah. You got some characters. <sighs> Topic for another time, man. So, uh, yeah, we'll hit them up. We'll figure that out. We'll just DM, probably. Yeah. Okay. So, this is your platinum hour. Did I, is there anything else you want me to talk about? You enjoy this one more than the first one? Yeah, definitely. For sure. I was hoping coming into it, I was like, I could at least get some shit out of South that people won't know. And it will make the tape more cohesive. I'm hoping that that's what it did. Yeah. So... The, look, your name's right here. This was the worst signature of all time, and it's already tearing off because I have my laptop right here. Oh, look. Oh, hey. Who's that? Oh, it was, it was Brittany. Brittany said, hey, miss you. Brittany. <laughs> Are you still in Hyde Park? <laughs> <laughs> you got to know. <laughs> I think she got a new boyfriend, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we're going to start it, end it. You remember, hey, I'm Sir South. You know what's crazy? I was like, yo, bro, let's, let's have this little punchline. And we'll, for every episode, we'll we'll run that. And we'll say, hey, this is my golden hour, and that was my golden hour. You like that heck? And he's like, yeah. And we've done it for every episode since. So we'll do it. We'll end it like this. I'm sorry, South, and this is my golden hour. And then I am, and that was. Okay. I am, sir, so it's I am, sir, South, this, this, was my, this is my golden hour. Then right after, no break, I am, sir, South, and that was my golden hour. Okay. Ready? Yeah, bro. I am Sir Sells. Oh, let me start. I'd say I would say hi, bro. Oh, hey, right. how are you? I'm okay. gonna tape all the way. I'm a salesman. <laughs> hey, this is Sir South. This is my golden hour. Boom. And I am Sir South, and that was my golden hour. That was wildly unenergetic and uneventful. All right, all right, all right. Let me get in my acting mode. Okay, yeah, there you go. Act like everyone's your best friend, bro. Hey. This is Sir South, and this is my golden hour. Oh, I love you, dude. Hey, this is Sir South, and that was my golden hour. And he's a friend of the show, nothing more, nothing less. Nothing Big- more, nothing less. Hey, Kev, give me a handshake, man. Mm. I'll see you in prison.